That's a good start. When, when you want it. <laughs> I mean, if you want it 300 yards in the middle, that's not what you want to see. So now, now so we need to 300 down the middle. So I think uh, like Henry said, the conditions aren't always perfect. You're often playing a lot of wind and you have to make decisions. Saat ini kami berada di Royal Golf Course Jakarta untuk persiapan Medi dari Sunmaster tahun 2018. Inilah para Alright, so that's a normal one. And then I feel like that, you know, that, that's not a good day. That, that's going to carry about 300 yards. Um, Elm? Then I'd say there's a mid flight, something that I'm going to feel that's a bit more in control. This is, this is like on a tee shot that I'm feeling a little uncomfortable, you know, because the longer the ball's in the air, the more chance it has to spin off to the side. So, you know, if there's a, if there's a hole with a lot of trouble left or right, I'm going to feel like I, I, I bring the flight down. I'm going to put the ball maybe an inch further back. I feel like I'm not going to get behind it as much in my turn. And I feel like I'm, you know, I call it covering the ball. I always feel like I'm on top of the ball for impact. You know, I might, I might not sort of split the fairway, but I know I'm never going to miss it by much. Hey. Does that sound a little bit funny? <laughs> so that's a flight that's uh, keeping me in play. I might, I might kind of hit it in a fairway bunker, or I might just miss it in the rough, but I'm never going to, I'm never going to hit a bad shot doing that. A bit the um, same if you're standing on an elevated tee box that's really high right, up yeah. and the fairways down below. I always feel like I'd, I would like that just like low knuckleball rather than sending something really high. And if you're playing in a howling gale, this is a shot you might learn at home, you know, playing Lynx golf. Let's give the, should we scare the guy in the cart there? <laughs> You know, that's one that's just never going to get touched by the wind and it's just going to sort of chase out there, especially Lynx fairways, that's going to run. How far do you think you, you carry that one, about 230 yards, something probably, like that? Yeah, probably about 230, but, but then, it would, then it would run like 70 yards when that hits the deck. It could yeah. even run 100 yards when it hits the deck. Exactly. So it's just, that's, those are the decisions that we're facing on tour. It's all very well to think, okay, bombs away, hit driver, but sometimes if the wind's off the left, there's some trouble, bushes down the right, you know, we all know our games well enough to know what might happen. So that's when you try to make a smart choice off the tee. What can I do to still kind of hit a good aggressive golf shot? And you're still going to be committed, but how do I make a smart choice? And give, you know, what's the best probability of keeping this ball in play? So that those are the kind of decisions that we're making out and tour. Yeah, we don't play in an indoor environment. It's every day is different conditions out here. And the same for if, if we're just touching really quickly on the short game a lot of it is about reading the lie if we if we throw just a couple of couple of golf balls in the rough and you you know know this since, since you're playing that if it sits down you know you've got three different lies and depending on how much green you have to work with how far the shot is what kind of position the ball is in here, you would choose differently. It's not like, yeah, it's a, it's a low wedge and I'm playing them all the same. You're making choices all the time before you're going to execute the shot. How do you think you're going to be able to get to the back of the ball? Yeah. Can you hit a high one, a low one? Can I get the grab that I need? So I think it's, yeah, it's decision making that you need to, actually, need to make. Quite often on tour, when you see us duff a chip, it's actually we've made the wrong decision. It's not like we've hit a chip shot and, and we've hit the ground. We've hit a chip shot, you know, the, the, the technique's fine, but we haven't read the lie. We, we've just got more grass between the face and the ball, and it comes out dead when you've made a decision that you think you are going to get some ball. But I mean, Henrik, I think you're fantastic at this shot too. Sometimes on a, on a lie like this, where you see there's a big tuft of grass behind the ball, sometimes it's actually very good to tow in. This is almost when you tow it in. So you, you, know, you, uh, you, you, you make your, your lie angle higher and you tow it in like this. 
And the reason you're doing that is you're using much less of the club. You're just using this very corner of the club here, so it cuts through the grass much better. And I've seen you do that a lot, especially some tricky little Bermuda lies. But you know, you can get in here, you know, you're kind of going to guarantee your contact. Whereas if I played that same shot, maybe with an open face, you know, it can come out a lot softer. So obviously if you shot over a bunker, that's, that's not a great choice, but if it's just about making contact. Sometimes lifting the club up, towing it in, and playing it that way. And that, that yeah, also, also if good. there's a lot of grain on the greens, if you put a little bit of almost draw spin on it, there's a big better chance of, of you getting a bit of a release if, if the shot requires that too. So always, and sometimes if you're really good, you can do this. Just <laughs> on the green. And, and on that end, I think uh, I think that's all we have, right? Yeah. Thank you. Well, uh, you need to no, we'll leave it there. Thank, you, thank you a lot for coming out and sitting here. Ranking dari para pro yang akan bermain di BNI Indonesia Masters 2018. We standing here. Okay. Okay. Oh, we are lucky. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, you want the ice? Sekarang akan sesi foto bersama 